Welcome to What You Talking About Sports Talk. I'm going to be your host today, Hobert Grayson. Today we'll be talking about NBA playoffs, Game 7, Clippers Nuggets, Eastern Conference Finals. Joining us at some point to talk about that will be Brad Boyd. He is a high school basketball coach plus basketball enthusiast. So, Brad will be joining us in a little while, but right now let's talk about Game 7 for a little bit real quick. And that means that Nikolai Jokic and the Denver Nuggets have given the Los Angeles Clippers all that they can handle. Myself, I was under the impression that the Clippers would win this series handily, easily, 4-1, 4-2 at best. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that this game would be at a game seven. But Denver and the Nuggets have just done a phenomenal job in this series. So how do we get to this point? Well, we got to this point because a couple of days ago, Denver... 111, Clippers 98, and when I tell you that the Clippers, who are known for defense, have absolutely destroyed those dudes, they have not been able to stop Jokic or the Joker, as he's affectionately known. Uh, 34 points in the win the other night, 39 minutes. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's been really tough for those guys. Uh, right now, we have joining us Southside High School boys basketball coach Brad Boyd, also an avid basketball enthusiast. He's also the head coach of the Louisiana United TBT basketball team, so he's extremely knowledgeable and knows what he's talking about in the realm of basketball. Brad, what's going on, man? How are you doing today? Man, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, Robert. Uh, thanks for that introduction, man. I you rubbed my ego really well right there. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I I know how to tip for your fancy, man. That, that, that's an easy one, man. But thanks for joining us, um, Brad. And we're, uh, I was just talking about how the Clippers have done a poor job at defending Nikola Jokic. Um, they haven't been able to contain him in the high pick and roll. He's making the mid-range shot. He's making the three-point shots. What are some of the things that you've seen? Well, I love when you know you, you pick a side or say you know they're having so much trouble you know defending him or stopping. Him. Well, man, that dude is good. <laughs> and it's easier, it's easier said than done. You know, big as he is, you know, being not even that fast, can't lift that high off the ground, but he's just crafty, man. He controls the game. I, it's funny you bring him up first, man. I was talking with my team the other day, and I, uh, you know, used an example of that guy and how he kind of controls the team. They're like, what are you talking about? You know, the dirty guy does. I said, nah, but, it, you know, it, it goes through him, man, and makes them work. You know, so it's it's easier said than done, man. You just gotta hope a guy like that, you know, has an off night, maybe picks up a silly foul here or there to get him get him on that bench, you know. Right. And, uh, you know, just hope to to contain him because nobody's really contained him all year, and especially in the bubble. I mean, I don't know his exact stats, but you know, it's twenty 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 five points a game and rebounds and assists, and you know, every night, every night. You know, he had a good uh, quote earlier today or yesterday. And, and, and it makes perfect sense. They have no pressure on them. It's the Clippers who have right. never been to the conference finals. That's all the pressure. Right. You know, in a bubble, not in the bubble, you know, wherever it's at, it's still a, it's now it's a game seven and it's in the pressure cooker that's going to be extremely hot, you know, tonight. So it should be a good one. I, I definitely agree on that. And when, when I look at it again, going, going into the bubble, I, I've, I've said this all season that Kawhi Leonard was the best basketball player in the NBA. That was just my opinion. It probably didn't mean anything else to anyone else, especially <laughs> Los Angeles Lakers fans 
who are pretty high on LeBron James right now, but we'll talk about that shortly. But Kawhi, he showed up in game one, 30 plus points, not so much um, the rest of these games to where he was dominant and efficient. And for myself, I hate watching uh, other guys that talk sports. And somehow, earlier today, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just scrolling through social media and yeah. Shannon Sharp comes up. And his, his quote was, how does the Clippers get in this boat when their coach and their team is based and premised on defense? Hmm, that's a very good, uh, you know, I say this all the time because I, you know, I am an offensive minded coach, you know, and I, and I need to work better at the defensive side uh, of the game, you know, exactly the, almost the same thing as when I was a player. But, you know, the, you know, it goes back to this, man. You can be the greatest guys on defense. You still got to go and make shots, and 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 you got to do that night in, night out. And everybody's in the NBA. It's hard to to strap up and and lock down an NBA team for a seven game series. You might catch them a game or two, and it might be game seven tonight where they really lock down, and, and you'll see the difference, and, and they'll go into the finals. Or it might not, where you know they, they, they can't make a lot of shots, you know, and they're missing shots. And you know, I'm telling you that that pressure is playing a big part, uh, regardless. You know, you said the NBA players, and they, you know, that shouldn't get to them. But I'm telling you, Game Seven now, history on the line. You know, a, a franchise, a program that has never been to the even the Eastern Conference Finals, if I'm not mistaken. You know, that's, it's gonna be a good one tonight. I'm tuning in. I, I'm definitely tuning in. But when you when you look at this thing, Coach. You, you know, you have Kawhi Leonard, Marcus Morris, who shoots the ball well at times. Um, playoff P, he's been, he's been up and down. You know, you watch Barkley and Kenny Smith and, and Ernie and, and Shaq after, and they, you know, they're really giving it to Playoff P, and rightfully so because he's supposed to be a two-way player. He's supposed to be a guy that does well on both sides of the ball. He hasn't done that. Lou Williams is another guy that's supposed to be a two-way player. He has not done that. Patrick Beverly is supposed to be a defensive specialist. He has not done that. Yeah, you know, and and and, and you hit some of the things on the head too, which I'll go to the other side of it. Uh, Murray, offensive specialist. Jokic, offensive specialist. Just knows how to play the second game. And you hear the phrase all the time, you know, I can pull up and take a shot. You can have the hand up, perfect defense, in my face and everything, and I still make the shot, right? Right. You know, it's the, it, you know, the offense can always be a little bit better than the defense, you know. So I'm, I'm telling you, it goes back to, you know, the, you got to hope guys miss shots. you got to do all those great things, close out, block out, hand in people's faces, and hope they make shots because those guys are all stars. And Jokic, Jokic is proving down the stretch now that he is just—he's almost like ice water. Like he just is out there, just playing in the backyard, and you know, and, and finding guys open and getting open shots. When he, you know, I love when they come off the screen, throw it to him. He throws it right back the screen again. Then they throw it right back to him. Then he gets the wide open shot. It's just like a—it's it, almost like art, man. And, and it just you know, you don't have to be the fastest or the most athletic. You just play the game the right way. And you have to be able to shoot. That's the key thing. You know, you have to be able to knock down a shot. And both those guys can do it real well, you know. So it, it's going to be a good one. Right. Uh, another aspect or perspective of what's happening or the lack thereof is Montreal, Harold, and Zubi. They have not done a good job of defending and rebounding. And Harold also has been heralded maybe as a scorer. Um, he's, he's a guy that will get a defensive rebound and start the transition. Is he yeah. focusing too much on what he has to do offensively? Maybe for this game seven, he needs to be more detail-oriented on stopping Jokic. Yeah, I can agree with that. Maybe take that energy and really try to lock in on the defensive side. Because I noticed that he gets a bucket or two and he gets so hyped. Like, he's, <laughs> you know, he, and look, rightfully so, that's the type of player he is. But I just think sometimes you're getting hyped, you know, for a bucket here and here, and then you're wasting that energy, man. You know, I've got the name of the guy. You have fast breaks all the time. 
And, you know, people were like, oh, I'll go dunk it. You just go down there and lay it up and run back on defense. He was saving his energy. Uh, you know, so maybe he needs to save a little bit of energy and, uh, you know, focus on, you know, if you can hold Jokic to 20, under 20, I think the Clippers walk away with it. I think if Jokic gets to that 25, 30 level, the way he can make those passes and, and get everybody else involved, it's going to go down to the line. Uh, uh, another guy that I'm looking at that maybe Doc Rivers needs to initiate some playing time for in this game seven is, Patrick uh, Peterson. Um, he's a, he's an old crafty vet. Patterson, I'm sorry, Patrick Patterson. He's an old crafty ACC veteran that that has been in some battles. Why hasn't he been given minutes in this series? Are you speaking of Patrick Patterson from Kentucky? No, no, no. I think he played it. Kentucky or was that? Uh, I think he played at Clemson. Kentucky. It was Patrick pa- Patrick Patterson. It could be a different dude. I actually, I'm not even familiar with that guy. So if he had played this series, I don't know. I don't see him throwing him in there on uh, Game Seven. You know, if it's the guy that I'm thinking of, he could knock down a couple outside shots. More known for his, you know, defense and, and rebounding. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm Doc Rivers and, 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 and my job may be on the line. I lose this game. So I, <laughs> I think the pressure's on Doc Rivers too. You know, I'm telling you, that pressure. Make you do funny things, you, you know, your regular knockdown shots and knockdown free throws come a little short or, or, or go a little long and, and you start you start pressing, you know, you're pressing yourself whenever, you know, you may be down and get to that fourth quarter and you got to really, you know, try to hone in. It's not, it, it's easier to said than done, you know, so uh, I like the Nuggets tonight, you know, I like the upset. I, I You know, all the conspiracy theories guys are, you know, there's no way the NBA is going to let the Clippers lose, there's no way they don't want the... L.A. versus L.A. matchup with the ratings and da 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 But you hope that the game is going to be called clean and you hope, you know, the two teams play at their best and it's a good one. I don't want to see a lopsided win either way. I just want to see a good, clean game. Coach, Coach you're right on that. Patterson is, uh, did play his collegiate days at Kentucky. Yeah, he, he played with uh, Perry Stevenson from Northside High School in Lafayette. I think they played about the same years, he, uh, if I'm not mistaken. He's a nine-year vet in the NBA um, he's had stints with the Clippers. Uh, I mean, OKC, Toronto twice, Sacramento Houston, twice, man. and Houston. That's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He's, he he's, hit that corner three. He was kind of like uh, PJ Tucker. Right. You know, that's, that's his role. He was playing in the NBA. He could step out and uh, you know he really did that his last year at Kentucky. They allowed him to step out and shoot that three, man. And that's kind of what got him into the NBA. Right. You know, he, he's been a journeyman. Yeah, he's been a journeyman. So yeah. I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe a spark here or there, but I think they're gonna because it's not like um, you know it's the Clippers game seven too. They have pushed the game seven just right. like the Nuggets pushed the game seven. So you know, I think they're gonna stick with what they've been doing, and uh, you know, hope is just a good one. Well, at the at, at the end of the the night, in order for the Clippers to get a win and have a all LA Western Conference Finals. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and Marcus Morris are going to have to contribute 75 plus points, I, I believe. Um, yeah, and, Morris got Morris got to get double digits. He doesn't get double digits, you know, and, and then you just put that extra pressure on a Kawhi Leonard to have to get 35, and then Paul George to have to get 25, and then, you know, uh, Lou Williams to have to get 15, and Harold 15. I mean, just, you know, if everybody can chip in, they're 20, 25, or they're 10. You know, I mean, the Clippers should be fine. You you would have thought this series would have ended two, three games ago. But, right. like, I go back to, it's the pressure, man. I'm telling you, once they got it to 3-2 and then 3-3, three, three, oh, Lord. I mean, it's just in the three, in in the in the last game, I really feel how the stretch when the run started coming, and then you can't stop it. Then you start thinking about, oh, man, we're about to do uh, Those guys probably thinking about game seven already, you know, and then <laughs> now it's here, you know, so – Oof, it's going to be, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can really turn on that pro switch and really hone in and get the job done. Because if you look at it on paper, you know, you would say, hands down, Clippers should have been in the finals already, you know, so. I, I'm not going to give hindsight stats here. I'm going to give foresight stats. <laughs> um, Kawhi Leonard has to get 35 tonight. Paul George has to get 28. Uh, hmm, like, Mar- like Morris has to put in 18, and these three guys right here have to be all out and all in, locked in on the defensive end. Lou Williams, Patrick Beverly, and Montrez Harrell, they have to do their jobs defensively in stopping that high pick and roll. And then 
we still haven't talked about Kawhi and all the things that he does defensively to help you. Paul George, where are you going to be defensively tonight? I'm looking for all those things to come forth because I'm one of those guys that want to see. I wish we were not in the bubble because yeah. it would be the first time in history that LA and LA has met in the in the Western Conference Finals, and it's not a, a question of oh a guy has to travel three thousand miles to play a, play a, play two games, yeah. and then he's tired. From his flight back, he just he just put all the work on the on all the workers at the at the arena. They gotta change all the colors, all the banners every night. Switch it back and forth. Right, <laughs> and, and and I think but that yeah. that was that is what everyone was looking forward to. Um, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. When, when this season happen. starts, it happen, I guess. Yeah, now it's in the, it, it, it can still happen in the bubble. Now tell me this: whoever wins this whole championship deal. Is it going to be an asterisk by it, or are people going to really recognize? So when the Lakers do win and LeBron does get his, what, fourth ring, you know, uh, are they going to hold that against him? I'm sure they will, correct? Uh, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not per se a LeBron fan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> um, but, I, again, just because I'm not a LeBron fan doesn't mean that I don't respect the work that he puts puts in. Again, nobody takes care of their... Michael Jordan didn't take care of his body the way LeBron James does. Anybody that dedicates $1 million per, per year on the health, welfare, and maintenance of their body solely is a hero. Yes. Like, that alone says eons about LeBron James. And so no matter what you may think of him, and my issue with him has never been about skill set or development or ability to play the game. It, it's always been about toughness. I just don't think he's tough enough. Now, I got to give him credit for this. In the bubble, he's been the toughest dude in this series against Houston. Not only was he the toughest dude, he was the best player on the court. No one on Houston's team could stop him, and his confidence was so high and shooting the ball, he was making shots that I don't think I've ever seen him make consistently. So it's going to be a great series when the Clippers defeat Denver tonight and we get to watch a seven-game series, um, L.A. versus L.A. Now let's jump to the Eastern Conference Finals, man. This thing here has, uh, I'm just going to say it, Jimmy Buckets, has been phenomenal. And although he hasn't been scoring um, 30 plus points a game, he's been the best player offensively on the court for either team because he's made his teammates better, something that he did not do in the past. It was all about him. Yeah, he's he's, he's a man. And he's, 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 he's shown he's been, he's been a man in this bubble for sure. You know, he's, he's, he's got a chip on his shoulder, man. And I think you know, him being around them young guys, uh, he's got a lot of young guys on his team, and, and they look up to him. You know, it's, right. it's, it's probably be calling him Uncle Jimmy next, you know, like he's <laughs> calling for Cliff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cliff. But, you know, he's leading the way, man, and he's surrounded by guys that can knock down shots. He's got right. the pieces. He's got Bam in the middle, the, you know, the tough bruiser that's going to do whatever it takes to rebound. You know, uh, you know, like an upgraded guy has him out there a couple years back. And, uh, um, you know, he's just got some pieces, man, and those kids are – I say those kids, those younger players bought in. You got a good, a good veteran guard and uh, uh, the lefty uh, uh, going Dragic, and right. uh, they're just they're just playing well. They want to confidence too. Now you're gonna go into the Eastern Finals. There's no pressure on on, on the Heat. No I mean, pressure Boston, on the Heat at all. Boston's supposed to sweep them, just like Boston was supposed to, you know, beat up on Toronto. Um, you know, so it'll be an interesting series, uh, that one as well, man. And the other thing about that is two great coaches, and they actually play. You know, I'm not saying the rest of the team's not playing real basketball at a high level, but it, it's just so stagnant and so repetition of on ball screen and switch. And then let me go at this guy, you know, the Heat in Boston, they still run plays and run sets, and they, and they, and they manufacture that offense really, really well, coming from two really, really, you know, Obviously, you can tell great coaches in, in, in the NBA. So I, 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 I'm going to steal a bunch of stuff, man. I've been stealing all kinds of stuff from the <laughs> sideline plays, 
you know, ISO plays, just little things that, that could help your team win uh, some games down the stretch or, you know, in the playoffs, you know, something to kind of have something hidden in your pocket to pull out at, at a good moment, you know. So it's very uh, it's very intriguing to, to watch these two guys uh, uh, match up. You know, we, we mentioned uh, Jimmy Butler, Goran Dragic, Tyler Hero. Uh, the guy we did mention, though, was veteran Jay Crowder. Uh, comes oh, from Boston. God. He knows used to, those used guys. To, used, to, used, to, used, to, used to say, Jay, go ahead and shoot. <laughs> you can't tell him that no more. You can't tell him that no more. You got to go, go out there and close out now on Jay Crowder. Oh, my God. He's right. on fire. Right. The last, uh, uh, the last series, man, especially the last game, you know, he was, you know, the last two games, really, he was just, he was just out there, like, they're double here or swing, swing. It just seemed like he would always be open and he was catching and shooting. Like, that's what he did. And, uh, man, he's been playing really well. Well, the the thing that I'm looking at is minutes. Uh, you're gonna need Jay's experience out there. Um, he's one of the one of the uh, few guys on the Heat team that has playoff experience um, to where it really matters. And so, does his minutes go up from low thirties to the uh, upper forties, like maybe 38, 39 minutes a game? It will will. He increased Jay Crowder's minutes, and how did, did Crowder did Crowder play with some of the guys that are on Boston? Yeah, yes, from that time frame. Yes, he did. Yes, he yeah. Did. So he, you know, it, that, that plays a huge point too. You, know, you play with some guys. You know, you, you, I don't say nobody in the NBA is really intimidated uh, by anybody, but if you're more familiar with a guy. You want a team with a guy. Um, that could be valuable too for the Heat as well, you know. So definitely, his minutes might increase if he shoots that thing well and, 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 and get the rebounds he needs and play the beat he needs. He should, he should extend his minutes because he played a big part in, in that in closing out that series in the, in, in the last round. Well, all that applies to tendencies, knowing tendencies. When when you've hung out with guys and and, and y'all have had countless dinners together and and you know guys' innermost secrets. Now you know what this guy likes, what he likes to do, how he likes to do it, how he wants the ball, how he wants to come off the ball screen, you know, how he wants you to give him an entry pass in the post. Like, you know all these little intricate details that you can give your teammates that help you be a better ball club. No doubt about it. For... And it's, it's, it's the East Finals. When was the last time, I guess, that he's been to the, to the, to the championship uh, when LeBron was there? What, 20, 2014, maybe. 2013. 2014. Come 2013, on, 2014. Like that, huh? Quick right. six, six years. Uh, uh, so, you know, they itching. You know, in Boston, it's been a minute for Boston, too, since, what, Paul Pierce? And right. Same, same time. <laughs> same, same, same time, yeah, because they beat each other. Same time. Year. Right. Yeah. So, when, when we look at this now, you have for the Celtics, and you you rarely hear me say this, you rarely hear me say this, that a Duke Blue Devil is the best player suiting up on the team. But <laughs> Jason Tatum is that guy. Jason Tatum, um, you remember years ago they had the, the video out there where Kobe imitated everything Michael Jordan did? Oh yeah, like the side by side video. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, guess what? Now they got the Jason Tatum imitating Kobe Bryant video out, and when I tell you watching that, it's eerie crazy how similar don't, don't, the don't movements are. Don't let you come. Don't, I, don't, I'm not. Don't, 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 I'm not don't, saying. Don't. I'm not saying that Jason Tatum is Kobe Bryant, but he, what, he, he looks similar. I'm saying the movements are similar. The movements are similar. The, not not the not the manner in which they play the game. Not the killer mentality that Kobe had playing the game. Like no, I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is, Jason Tatum does a great job emulating the move and movements that he picked up working with Kobe Bryant directly. That paid off. Definitely. I can agree with that. And, and you can't, like, if, if you won't agree to that, then what will you agree to? 
that Marcus Smart has to be great, that Jalen Brown has to be great? They did, most definitely. At this point in time, where it's the Eastern Conference Finals or the championship or the whole thing, those big three or big two guys, the first five <laughs> and the three or four coming off the bench, they all need to be at their best. If not, you're going to stretch a game seven or, or you're going to lose a series. You know, I mean, it's everybody clicking on the hit. It, it's, it's NBA, it's the basketball at the highest level. And these guys now have been in the bubble. What are we talking about? Two months now, almost right. three months now. I mean, it's locked in time. And, and if, they, if they're going to grant them a ring at the end of this, best believe those guys that don't have a ring are are, are going to be coming 100% because they, they're right there. They can grasp it. They're in the finals of the conference now. A couple more wins, you're in the finals of the NBA. And then you're going to have to play. You're going to have to defeat the king, baby. You're going to have to defeat the king in the finals. <laughs> so what, what I'm looking at here, I'm looking at the Heat has, the Heat, they really have major issues. Because not only do you have to stop Jason Tatum, did I say Kimber Walker? Did I mention Kimber? Who Not sure, but he, he's been he's been off as of late. But he's a he's a he can get 30, 40 any given night. He's know, a so bucket. It's matchup problems for sure, definitely for sure. That Boston on paper before the game is tipped should win the game, no doubt about it. But you have to go play it over. You know that. You know that. You have to go play that game. Game one tonight, again, I'm looking at, uh, from my vantage point, um, Jimmy Butler is going to have to do more than the 17 it took him getting to get the the win, the, the wrap-up win um, in the last series over the Bucks. Kimball Walker, Jason Tatum, are one hell of a combination to have to defend because those guys run all night. They they know how to come off screens. Um, they know how to do all the little things to get the ball in the basket. What are your thoughts on what each team has to do tonight to get a victory? Well, both it's going to be a high scoring game. Both those teams run their offenses really well. So I, I see the game going into the hundreds, triple digits. And it's going to be those last three or four minutes where you execute the play and you make the layup or you hit the shot. And then vice versa on the other side is if you get the stop or not. So um, once again, just like we talked about it on the other side, I just hope this game is a good game. I hate games that are lopsided, <laughs> you know, the, the blowout from the jump. And, you know, sometimes those series start off like that when you go on the road or you go, you know, you rotate and go to the other side. We're all in the bubble. So there's no home court advantage. Um, you know, so both teams got to play really well. Like we said, from top to bottom, the coaches got to call the right plays. They got to make the right adjustments and, you know, everything that goes along with getting the W. Right. You know, whatever level you're coaching on, from bitty basketball to the NBA to high school to TBT tournament, I mean, you have to make adjustments. And then you guys got to go out there and they got to make the plays, man, and put the ball in the bucket. And, you know, how the, how the saying goes, whoever has more points at the end of the night is going to win. But there's a lot that comes along with that. So, you know, hopefully those guys perform to the to their ability, man, because a lot of people are tuning in and watching the NBA. And, you know, I know I t tell all my guys to try to pick up bad habits, but, you know, watch the NBA, man, and see those guys spacing, man, spacing in the NBA. It's, it's, it's awesome, man. It's right. so spaced out and supposed to play the game. Well, uh, I, of course I'm going with the Clippers. Um, again, no, no Kevin Durant, so that means that Kawhi is my favorite player in the league. Uh, for obvious reasons, I'm a guy that's big on efficiency. If you're a scorer or if you're supposed to be considered a scorer, I'm not a max high volume shooter guy. I don't like guys shooting 20 for 80. Just not my thing. Uh, also, um, I think that the Boston Celtics win game one. Uh, I, I don't know how Jimmy Butler keeps rotating from Tatum to Walker. Like, he's going to have to defend both of them all night, and that means that he, he, he's going to need plenty of protein before and after. Um, he, he's going to need some energy stimulants because he has a long, he has a long night ahead of him. Um, we want to thank Coach Boyd for joining what you're talking about, Sports Talk, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks for having me over and have a good one. No doubt.